when I was in theological seminary for a year before God told me to get out, um, I, um, I, I learned about an ancient historian named Tertullian who wrote about the impact of the early church, of, of early, the earliest for, organized forms of Christianity. And I remember that he said something that made a huge impression on me about how the church began to transform the culture and society of that time. Tertullian said in the early church, people would look in on the life of a congregation which had brought strangers together. And they would say one thing about what they saw, see how they love one another. See how they love one another. That, that according to Tertullian, was what, what sparked a revolution in consciousness. If you see love in action among real people in real space and time, it's impossible ever again to write that off as a pipe dream that's a nice thing to talk about, but can never be achieved. You know, once you've seen it, it's real. And you have to start saying to yourself, well, if it's not real in this moment with in this situation that I'm in, how can I help establish the conditions where it could become real? And, and I think that that should be a way that we all, all who are involved in religious community think about uh, mission in our time. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. And your, your work on, on what community can look like or should look like in that space um, has been so helpful. I know uh, th this quote um, in one form or another, I've heard in numerous places, but you, you do write, uh, in true community, we will not choose our companions for our choices are so often limited by self-serving motives Instead, our companions will be given to us by grace. Often they will be persons who will upset our settled view of self and world. In fact, I love this, uh, we might define true community as that place where the person you least want to live with lives, um, <laughs> which is a very challenging quote, but I, I, I suppose articulates that sense of that. That's a very uh, different way to how most of us live in that um, and I know Jesus said a couple of things about this, about how it is easy to love the people who are your friends and who you're close with. But there is something about this, this more rigorous um, commitment to a love where nobody will be left behind and nobody will be left out. That when you see it, it, it does feel quite transcendent in a sense. Have you, do you feel you've belonged to communities like that a number of times in your life, Parker? Well, I think that one of the gifts of this community near Philadelphia that I referred to called Pendle Hill, where 80 people lived this very close communal life together. And I stayed there not just for the R&R &R sabbatical that I mm. thought I was taking. I stayed there for 10 more years as Dean of Studies at this adult study center. So I had a deep immersion in really what was a, a kind of secular monasticism um, or an ashram or a kibbutz or a commune, uh, you know, formed by Quaker faith and practice um, and uh, tr the traditions of Quakerism. Um, and, and, it, it, and it was a crucible experience. I mean, you, you know, you don't go through a daily life 365 days a year with 80 other people um, doing everything together, although there was plenty of space and time for solitude and for family life and all the other things we need. But you don't go through that without rubbing up against each other, sometimes in ways that you know, where the creative sparks fly and sometimes in, in ways that are hurtful, painful, destructive. Um, what I learned about, about the, the, that's behind the quote that you read the last part of it, that community is that place where the person you least want to live with always lives. Uh, it was a true line, but a laugh line because, and the laugh is obvious, but the, the truth of it is that in community, in true community, you're living so close to each other 
that there's always somebody on whom you're going to project the stuff you don't like about yourself. It's all projection. And, and because you can't walk away from that in community, the great gift is that you have a chance to withdraw those projections, to own what it is that you don't like about yourself and to find some way to love it. If, if, if anything is guaranteed in life, it is that what we can't love about ourselves, what we're ashamed of about ourselves, the, the, the unexamined shadow in ourselves is always going to be projected onto the other. That's the dynamic of enemy making. Mm. Ultimately, that's the dynamic of war. But if, if we live a face-to-face -face life, interpret that in whatever terms are reasonable for your situation, if we live a face-to-face -face life, we have a chance to say, oh, I see, in looking at this person whom I can barely stand to be around, I'm looking at a mirror to myself. Mm -hmm. Now the question becomes, how can I use what I see in that mirror to grow inwardly in self-acceptance and self-love that will translate into love for others. Love your neighbor as yourself. I mean, that's not a random comment, right? That's, that's a, 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 there's a deep insight there about how love works in the world. And anything we can't come to terms with within ourselves is something we will never come to terms with in the world. Thomas Merton, one of my spiritual heroes, uh, did some brilliant writing around our inability to embrace the stranger within, the stranger within ourselves, which translates directly into animosity toward the stranger outside ourselves. Uh, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's a huge topic and it's one of the reasons that we have to be talking about self-love or at least self-care that, mm. that is partly rooted in self-love and can lead toward more self-love because self-care can also lead toward love extended to the larger world. I think one of the things that I wrote at some point that gets quoted a fair amount um, sometimes is uh, anything, whatever we can do to care for ourselves is, is not a selfish act. It's ultimately deep being done on behalf of those whose lives we come in contact with. 